Haribo. It's my first time recording a video with this phone. It's a new phone. I wish I could reverse the screen. First of all, take a look at the deities. Okay, this is Krishna Balaram Mandir in Queens, New York. Shri Shri Hari Halad Hari. So you have Hari, which is God, and Halad Hari, the holder of the plow. You know, Krishna, the word Krishna, when you break down the root of Krish, it actually means to cultivate, right? I don't want to call Krishna an agricultural deity because then you're going to start making him equal to all of these demigods that are constantly visiting the planet to teach us things like Thoth, Thoth, Vyasadeva, Ganesha, those beings, they taught us how to use the pen, how to write books and stuff like that. Because our memory, we had become mundo. We became retarded. Okay? Let's just keep it real. If you go to the Nuapians, they'll tell you their version of when we became mundo or retarded. They'll say that there was something called a barathery gland and it was removed and humans lost their 24 strand or their 12 strand DNA. Whatever the truth is, the truth is humans were much higher than we were than we are right now and somehow we lost some of this essence so i don't want to tell you that krishna is an agricultural deity so you'll just diminish his importance because that's not what it's all about and then shri shri hari halad hari the white one right next to krishna so what you're seeing the black one is god in the mode of enjoyment pleasure bliss and the one on the left is god in the mode of service Balaram's total joy comes from serving Krishna, so he is the spiritual master of all living entities. So you're still seeing Godhead, whether you see the white one or the black one. You're just seeing God in different bodies and different modes of expression. And that white one carries a plow. He carries a plow. He was known to change the course of rivers. Well, you think these ancient science, scientific pharaohs, in ancient Kemet, they mastered the art of water because everything in their life was about water or the lack thereof. Their death would be caused by the lack of water. Pharaohs knew everything about hydraulics and stuff like that. They knew how to make man-made lakes and, and make rivers that change course and all of that. Like this is what the pharaohs did, you know what I mean? They were intricately connected to water and they were intricately connected to agriculture. So whatever Krishna Balaram was doing on this planet 5,000 years ago, in addition to Krishna's mission statement, which is found in the Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures, why does Krishna come to this planet every 8.64 billion years in that form, that blackish cowherd boy form? Why does he come here? He says, one, to deliver my devotees. To take care of my devotees, to love my devotees, to deliver, to give them salvation and liberation. That's one reason. Another reason he comes is to reestablish dharma. Dharma is not religion. Religion is temporary. It could change. I used to be Jehovah's Witness. Then I was Muslim or Ansar Allah Muslim, Nubian Islamic Hebrew. And even while I was Nubian Islamic Hebrew, even within that my beliefs had changed because I started off as an Ansar Muslim slash Nubian Islamic Hebrew. Then we became like some kind of cowboy Jews. I mean, check the history. We became cowboy Jews. And then after that, we became, well, I left when Nuabian was taking its seed form. He used to give me the books to proofread. What you have today in the form of the Holy Tablets, tablets I used to have in the form of little pieces of pamphlets with pictures of dinosaurs and stuff like that. He used to give it to me to proofread and told me, don't go teach this in Sunday class. He didn't tell me why, but anyway, I went and I taught it in Sunday class anyway. You know, because that's my nature. Like, you can't give me secrets of a metaphysical nature and expect me to keep it. You could tell me all of the sinful stuff you did who you killed, who you did whatever with, and I ain't gonna tell nobody. But if you tell me some special stuff like Krishna's toenails could shine, I'm gonna tell somebody. So Krishna, whatever you don't want me to know, don't tell me. Anyway, right? So we have Sri Sri Hari Halad Hari here. And, and, and this is just a quick video on this new phone to christen this phone, so to speak, to make it an instrument of Krishna's service. And I just was looking at the altar, man. I was here chanting. This is Tulsi Maharani, boy. Just to see Tulsi, you're blessed. Just to touch her, just to smell your fragrance. Remember, she never leaves the feet of Vishnu. So somewhere beyond our range of senses, above this plant, somewhere here, 
somewhere in this region. No disrespect to Tulsi. I know devotee's gonna be like, ah, he touched Tulsi. Uh, you know, it's, I'm sorry, man. I made a mistake. I'm I'm in a human body, okay? I touched Tulsi. Yeah, she shook. She's probably happy, okay? But somewhere in this domain, over this plant, is the entire kingdom of Lakshmi Narayana. Somewhere over that plant is the lotus feet of Vishnu. Somewhere over that plant is the unlimited Ananta Sesha. That's the multi-headed. <sighs> multi-headed serpent thousand-headed serpent that you always see vishnu laying down using him as a couch that also is balaram that thousand-headed serpent is also baladev the brother of krishna so once again anything that serves krishna whether it's a cloth or beads whatever you use whatever paraphernalia you use to serve krishna all of that is balaram so i'm looking at this beautiful altar we have here and a thought came to me. Well, this morning I was reading about Shalagram Sheila. If you don't know what a Shalagram is, just look up S-A-L-A-G-R-A-M. Shalagram. And they're very special stones. Some say they're ammonites. Some say they're meteorites. I don't know the origin, but you can research it and leave the comments on the video. But Shalagram, one thing interesting I noticed about it is that it said that Shalagram Sheila has an effect for 24 mile radius that means up down left right all 10 directions for 24 miles shalagram shila increases the effect of your spiritual activities by 1 million as a matter of fact if you die within two miles of a shalagram shila no matter what you believe or what you've done or what you haven't done if you die within two miles of a shalagram shila you go straight back to vaikunta which is the spiritual planets. So this is a very blessed path. So knowing that the Shalagram Sheila has an effect for 24 miles instantly made me think about the fact that, well, Organite also has an effect for X amount of miles. It's about, I was told 25 miles it has an effect. Haribo, it has an effect for about 25 miles. So I said, wait a minute. If Shalagram Sheila has an effect, and organite has an effect and we know that shalagram shila is always placed on a throne or a seat or an altar of its own then why not construct altars made of organite we have information from the Srimad bhagavatam that the dwelling places the abodes of the demigods are constructed of interwoven or intertwined organic inorganic metallic and gem materials what is that telling you? Whenever you have a matrix of inorganic, organic, metallic, and gems, it creates a frequency that for lack of a better word, we'll just call organ. And this organ is good for your health, both in a gross physical level, five senses, five elements, ether, fire, water, earth, air, liquid, all of that fly stuff. So you have this organite affects you on that physical level, the gross physical level and it affects you on the subtle physical level meaning the mind the intelligence and the false ego are also affected by the subtle energy emitted by organite devices so if we have altars this is the future now once again i ain't got the money to do this right now but if i had the money to do that i would build an organite altar so i'm just planting the seeds in the minds of the devotee that yes yeah, sure all of this stuff is beautiful but you understand that during the age of Dwapara Yuga, which was prior, any time prior to 3100 BCE was Dwapara Yuga. So anything in excess of 5,000 years from this date, 2016, was the age of Dwapara Yuga, which was also known as the age of, not temple worship. Yeah, that was temple worship because the age of sacrifice was the prior age. So temple worship was the age of Dwapara Yuga. Back then, all of this stuff that looks like brass would have been solid gold. Real gems, real diamonds, all of that stuff would have been on the deities, but we're not as wealthy as, as we formerly were. We don't have access to those minerals because the bears and all of those other rich corporations are in South Africa and, and cobalt mining operations are in the Congo and they're taking all of the mineral wealth and storing them up for a future time. I guess after all of the food runs out, we'll all be eating diamonds and gold. Anyway, 
We can construct altars made of organite. The materials are still available. Can you imagine the effect now? Let's think about this. This altar by itself is all Balaram, spiritual energy used for the service of Krishna. The second most powerful being in existence is Balaram. He's fully 99% of the potency of Krishna, but he has 100% free will. So he could do what he want and he chooses to come in the form of this altar. He chooses to come in the form of these deities. Anything used for Krishna's service is Balaram. We can make altars out of organite and the effect that it will have, this altar alone as it is, has a transcendental effect on the living entities. And it has a material effect because anything transcendental, once it cools down or slows down, condenses into material energy. So I can only imagine if we had some organite pieces in this. I mean, you can already feel the effect when you come to the temple. I can only imagine how organite would enhance your experience. And once again, this is a Krishna oriented mandir, okay? But you can do this in your local church. You can do this in your school, in your hospital, wherever places you frequent, whatever's holy to you, whatever's special to you. Try to incorporate some organite. I wouldn't tell you to incorporate Shalagram Sheila into the construction of your whatever's unless that building is used to serve Krishna because Shalagram is another form of Krishna. But when it comes to organite, use it. Use it profusely. We need it in this age because in this age, man, pharmaceuticals, if you look at Revelations chapter 18, you have the word pharmakia and the sorcery was known, pharmakia, sorcery, was known to deceive the whole world. And what's going on? Our rivers are being polluted with all of these pharmaceutical runoff and all of these fertilizer runoff and the male frogs are turning into female. They are growing ovaries and they are receiving sexual activity from other male frogs and males are giving birth. Now you understand that what's in the drinking water, remember like upstate, the Croton Reserves, New York, you know frogs live there, right? And if the frogs are coming out with two heads and if a male is turning into a female right there in a the reservoir, what you think is gonna happen to you once that water gets down into the New York City system? Well, your, your boys will start wearing dresses and and makeup and your girls will start growing beards and wide shoulders and strong muscles so things are starting to reverse right now we're at a very precarious situation but offer all of your things all of your pure vegetarian products at least offer them to Krishna before you make it Krishna says a leaf a leaf or tulsi leaf what's so important about this plant <laughs> if you soak your drinking water in tulsi leaves for about eight hours it removes all of the fluoride from the water. I'm going to leave you with that because this video is about 13 minutes long so far. And I just wanted to tell you that going forward in the construction of anything holy, you should incorporate some organite. And if there's any devotees out there that's already experimenting with organite, please make a throne for Shalagram Sheila composed of organite. Only good things can come of that. So this is my first video. I don't even have a name for it. Maybe it'll be called... Welcome from Krishna Balaram Mandir. But either way, y'all, keep chanting. If you really want to know where my temple is located, it's right here. In this bag right here. This is my temple right here. Those beads are the 108 gopis, and that one with the orange tassel is Krishna himself. That's my real temple. I don't have nothing else. I don't own nothing. I didn't come to this world with nothing, and I ain't leaving with nothing material. But... No matter if my beliefs change, because remember, Krishna came to establish Dharma, not belief. Dharma is your intrinsic nature, just like water. The nature of water is to be wet. The nature of fire is to burn and be hot. The nature of the living entity, his Dharma is just to serve the Supreme Lord. So he came to reestablish Dharma, that aspect of service. And last but not least, he came to crush the miscreants and the demonic forces. So... I'm thankful that he came 5,000 years ago. It's so recent, I can still smell him. Hare Krishna.